What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Alexander, the voice in the void, the lone wolf, your favorite host with a list, and welcome to the Twinkle Podcast. Now, if you've listened to the podcast on any of your platforms, hey, welcome back. But if this is your first time, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you stick around for more. But without further ado, let's get started. Now, I was given a question at one point in defense of the MCU. Is the MCU too woke? I didn't know how to really answer that question. So I invited the person that gave me the question into the vault to sit down and have a talk. What you're about to see is a three-part series of my defense of the MCU and comic book movies in general. Hope you enjoy. But uh, I'm looking forward to this. I wanted to have this conversation. We've been trying to do this for, what, almost almost six months now. We've been trying to do this, right? I would have to agree with that. It's about that, yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate you having me. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. You know, I mean, you and I have definitely different opinions and uh, we're very passionate about what we're about to do discuss so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm bigger all right so so for everybody that don't know out there what we're talking about today is the mcu in general um my buddy mike and i we agree on a lot of things but i think we disagree on the one main thing is that mike doesn't like the mcu as much as i do i'll just say it like that um i understand why a lot of people don't like it and that's fine you don't have to like it i don't like everything about the dceu or much of anything i don't like a lot of stuff uh and it's okay everybody has their own opinion but i think mike has the wrong idea about stuff and that's where the whole conversation is kind of going so i'll tell you what how about you open the floor and tell me exactly what bothers you so much about the mcu how much time do you got (laughs) (laughs) um so here's the thing i'm not gonna dog the mcu completely it's the direction that it's going in now So if you like, look at if you look in two thousand two, okay, Spider Man with Tobey Maguire, that was the first superhero movie that started everything, okay, and it was a money grabber, and it was one of the best superhero movies to date. I mean, except when you get to the Avengers, and obviously that generated a lot of money, but uh, that was a phenomenal movie. Then you got Spider Man two, okay, Tobey Maguire and uh, Alfred Molina, and Sam Raimi's direction it was spot on. Okay, I love the direction they were going in. And we all know that Spider Man 3 was a little Off. rough around the edges. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, very it was. Much so. very much it was so. yeah, I get it. And then, you know, then you get this rebound with Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr. Now, you know how much I dislike Kevin Feige. I can't stand Kevin Feige right now. But back then in 2008, we did agree with this that he was making some very good executive decisions. Right. Okay. I know he supported Robert Downey Jr. being cast into that character because honestly, I believe that he was the perfect fit. He nailed that character. And if anybody disagrees, then you're just an idiot. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. Yeah, I can agree with that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he nailed that character. Uh, Iron Man 2, not bad. I thought that was really good with Mickey Rourke. And then when you get to Iron 3, that was pretty bad because we both agreed. It didn't really follow the source material that we... Yeah, it didn't thought. follow it close enough. Oh, it was, it, was, it was garbage. Yeah. Okay, but then he, they were building something. I liked how they were building the Avengers. Now, you had the Iron Mans. You had the Thors. You had the Captain Americas. They're building something. And the Hulk. Okay, they made two Hulk films, which we know the first one sucked. They're Banna, but then the second one was I mean, it was okay with Edward Norton. I'm glad that he didn't wasn't in the Avengers. I don't think Edward Norton would be a really good cast for the all the characters mm-hmm. being messed with. I think you and I agree, agree with that. But I thought it was fantastic. The way they built it for the Avengers. You know, with Thanos being the ultimate villain, because literally he is the ultimate villain. Except for Galactus. I thought Thanos is the ultimate villain. Okay, and I thought the, now you and I, I don't know how you would feel about the Russo brothers, but I thought they did a fantastic job with Civil War. I thought they did a fantastic job with Part 1 and Part 2 Avengers mm-hmm. Endgame. The only thing I had a problem with the Endgame, and which is the direction that they're going in now, okay, is when you had, right at the end, you had literally all 15 women superheroes lined up, okay, and they're like, I, f- I forgot, who was that one character that was in uh, Wakanda? That she was the general. What's her name? Uh, Okoye. Okoye. She's like, she's got help. And they got 15 women just rushing in. Get the frick out of here, man. Come on. that's And that is literally what it's translating to. It is becoming the MCU at this point. Okay? And I'm not, I'll, I'll get to the point on this one, too, is that when you're getting to that, okay, you look at the Hawkeye shows. Okay? Eh, that kind of flopped. You looked at the, Lo- oh, the Loki. You know, they had that female Loki character. That wasn't really responding well to fans. Okay. Now, nah, wait a minute. Now, Loki is literally still considered the best of the Disney Plus shows so far. I never said it wasn't. I'm just saying the direction they're going to. Hawkeye was not a good show. 
And Civil the War- problem with Hawkeye as a show is not the show, and I, 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 I would defend it jealously. It wasn't the show that most people didn't like. The fact that it's Hawkeye that has always been a problem. Hawkeye has always been seen as a extraneous character, somebody on the outside, which I think is complete asinine. Because to me, honestly, Hawkeye is probably the, your third most important person leading into the Avengers. Sure. You, if it's not for him making the calls, telling Fury, "Hey, we shouldn't kill Natasha. We need to use her." Him staying in uh, Prague. I forgot what city they're in. Uh, I believe it was Prague. Um, and saying, yo, we need to get you out of here. We'll get you out of here. And getting her out of there. He's the one on the ground that got her out of there. He was the one that brought her back to Fury and sat down with Fury and said, hey, we can use her as an asset. Showing her that, hey, you don't have to be the weapon that they made you to be. It was him basically almost giving her back her humanity. They made sense. Loki look like a bitch in that freaking show, dude. I'm sorry. But see, they I did. Think, but, that was garbage. It was see, poorly was, written. But see, here's the thing. Loki is... And I, I, I credit uh, some uh, the guy on Reddit. I can't I can't remember his name, but he brought this up literally in the first Avengers movie. He said you really can't look at Loki as a villain, which honestly in the comic books he's not really a villain. He's really just somebody that likes to mess with folks, especially Thor. But they developed him a pretty damn good yeah, villain. Yeah, they, they did they exactly. Did. Um, if you look at it as like just look at him how they age, how Asgardians age. When Loki's case, he's not technically a guardian, you know, he's a frost giant, undersized, just said whatever. Um, if you look how they age, Loki and Thor are technically teenagers when we meet them in the movies. So if you look at it that way, then what Loki is, is a moody teenager becoming an adult trying to find himself. And I think because of the acting style and how they portrayed him, the Loki series kind of makes more sense. Because now you, you it get, makes you get, sense, but it's not good. It's the nah, I thought it was good. I, I think it had its flaws, but I thought it was good. Now, me personally, I don't think Loki was the best series that they've done. Um, I put it eh, probably number two right now because Moon Knight is phenomenal. I am I am in love with Oscar Isaac and his portrayal. He's a great actor. Oh, and God, have mercy, not, he is so good. It, he's saving that show. If they didn't cast him as Moon Knight, now I've, I haven't watched Moon Knight yet, but I've read the reviews, and I'm not going to take anybody's opinion by my own. I got to watch mm-hmm. it first. Oh yeah, absolutely. But with him being casted as Moon Knight, it it makes me more interested to see what the outcome is going to be on that show. Don't really sleep does. on Ethan Hawke. His portrayal as Arthur Harrow, especially the fact that Arthur Harrow was such a such a minor. I can't even say minor. He is so minute in the, in, the, in the grand scheme sure. of comic books, but. Ethan Hawke brings him to life, gives him meat, gives him substance. It makes you look and it's like, damn, how come y'all couldn't use them like this in the comic book? Sure. It makes you believe it. Don't sleep on Ethan Hawke. As, as good as Oscar Isaac is, Ethan Hawke is holding his own damn well as well. Well, he's getting scrutinized by his uh, by the character. Oh, yeah. Which is so. stupid. No, but, th- but that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, you don't have anything to go on, so you kind of have to build something. You have to build him into something. Sure. So, I mean, it's, and honestly, the way they're building them into it right. uh, is good. Um, but, going back to something you started off yeah, with. Yeah, so I, I mentioned, so, end game, so I, let, me, let me finish on the MCU. So okay. I talked about the end game, okay? I disagree a couple parts in that movie. The way it was written, I was disappointed, but the Russo Brothers did a fantastic job. Now, I'm going to say this on the record. The end game was the peak, the peak of the Marvel and MCU. You are not going to get anything better than that. Marvel is literally going to go keep going like this. It's going to decline and decline and decline and decline. Where they're going to lose money and they're going to have to figure out, the executives have to look at Kevin Feige and say, what the frick are we doing? Because let me tell you what they got going on right now. They're making a movie on, I think their Iron Heart's going to be, I think she might make an appearance from Doctor Strange and they're going to try uh, to make her own movie. I don't think Doctor Strange, I, think I know for a fact he's going to be, she has her own series on Disney+. Plus. You think that's going to sell? Uh I mean, what the Disney Plus shows the aren't there. No. The Disney it's Plus not shows aren't sell. there to sell. They're on the streaming channel. She was They're created in 2014. They didn't sell sh- crap for comics on that character. She is not a very popular character. She's a spawn up of Iron Man. Okay, now they got a She Hulk. She Hulk has always been a popular character. She, Just not as popular as the Hulk and a bunch of others. But She Hulk has always been a character where a, a few people would like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me check that out real quick. And that's pretty much all she's going to do. She's in the Disney Plus series. It's not like she's getting her own movie. That makes sense. Use characters that are not wildly popular as Disney. Do you know Plus how much shows. costs? Do you know how much it costs to make these TV shows? Yes, I do. Nowhere near as much as movies, though. It costs a lot of freaking money. Okay, it's Disney. It's they ain't hurting. They, they keep losing money. They will be hurting because Disney I, is not losing I, money. 
That, look, dude. Have you Disney seen their is, stocks? Yes. Have you seen the stocks? I'm not worried about the stock because you got to remember, Disney is not doing this, the, the TV show specifically for the movies. Yes, they tie into the movies and they do generate interest in other little things, but they're not really doing it to uh, generate money, like wild money. They're not trying to do Spider-Man No Way Home money on these TV shows. They're not. You can't anyway because it's a streaming channel. You're only going to get what people pay every month for the stream. If Correct. People keep you're not you're not you're not wrong. But if people keep if people keep uh, deactivating their memberships, canceling their memberships, okay, that's obviously going to lead just like what happened on Netflix. People are canceling their memberships like crazy. They're losing a ton of money right now. But the thing about it is, is Netflix did not lose as many subscribers as people think. When you look at and this actually goes for Disney as well. When you look at the number of subscribers that did, that Disney and Netflix and Paramount Plus and all these people have lost over the last few months it has nothing to do with people turning on shows. Nothing. You gotta remember what has happened around the world. All these, all these streaming channels pulled out of Russia. That's where ninety-five percent of all these lost streams come from. Every single stream, I mean, um, every single subscriber that Netflix lost. If you look at it in totality, they lost a close to seven hundred and fifty, seven hundred sixty-ish thousand subscribers. Ninety-five percent of that, and that isn't me. You can go look this up for on on any type of. Um, a financial statement channel, whatever. 95% of the people that they lost came from when they pulled out of Russia and said, we're just going to cut it off. Y'all can't have it because your government is tripping, attacking the Ukraine. You honestly believe that Russia is the main reason that's where, for that's, the invasion but, of Ukraine? But that's where, but that's where they lost okay. most of their subscribers at, not because of the, the TV shows. I'm not saying that Netflix and most of the streaming channels aren't losing streamers. I'm not, I'm not saying okay. that they aren't All losing right. any, but that's, right. where, that's where the majority of what they lost okay. is at. Okay, well, I'm just telling you right now, it's going to decline, and it's going to be very consistent of people canceling their subscriptions, and I'll tell you why. So, like I mentioned before, okay, Avengers literally is at its peak. After the Avengers, it's going to go downhill. I don't think Doctor Strange 2 is going to generate as much revenue as you think. Oh, yeah. They, oh, oh, yes, it is. Here's what yes, they are literally jamming. Okay. So, you know how many cameo appearances are going to be in that movie? Yeah, and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Too much is not good. Too much is not good. You're you, jamming too much. You're when, you, when you're trying, too many when you're trying, when you're trying to this. tell, when you're trying to tell a story about we, reality being warped, reality being bent, you, other universes are being mashed into ours and then being torn apart again. You're going to have a lot of people. Now you having them in there and you seeing them here, seeing them here, seeing them here. Maybe a line here, too. maybe a line here too. That's fine. But that's not what you think. You keep thinking that they're going to throw all these people in and everybody's going to have a point to do and a point to prove. And everybody's going to have It's already to out do. there. They've already but, leaked this information. Yes, but I guarantee you by the time you see the finished product, it's not going to be anything like what they say because guess what? That's all Marvel has ever done. Anytime they release a the trailer, it is almost never exactly what the movie was going on in the movie. Listen. That's what they do. Kevin Feige plays everything close to the best. He doesn't actually show you the cards he's playing. He'll literally show you like, hey, look. All I got is all I got is two twos, and then by the time you go to rake the hands, in, it's like, oh my bad, I actually got four twos. Okay, it, that's what he does. Well, we, if you want to talk about Kevin Feige, we could, that's another conversation we can have. But let's just finish the MCU at the end of this part, and then we can get back to Kevin Feige because I love to talk about that douchebag. So I'll tell you right now, with the MCU, it's a, I literally call it the MCU. It's a, he, Kevin Feige is literally trying to push women, 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 women superheroes, lined up completely. He's overpowering the men superheroes at this point. That's his agenda. Fine. It comes down to if it resonates with you or not. These movies don't resonate with me anymore. Okay? I'm just telling you straight up. Now, I think Doctor Strange is not going to be nearly as good as the first one. My opinion. If I'm wrong, I'll eat my words and we'll do another podcast and I'll say, hey, I'm, I'm an asshole. Okay? But I don't think it's going to be as good as the first one. I think there's going to be jamming too much down people's throats. Okay? Now, let's go back to before the uh, before Doctor Strange. Let's go let's, let's get, let's get Black Widow. Okay, here's an example of this. Okay, Black Widow, we both agreed, came out. It, it took too long for that movie to come out. Ten years too late. By Ten years too freaking too late. I agree with you on that. Do I think Black Widow's a popular character? No. Was she a big character in the Avengers unit in the comics? No. But they really pushed it because they want to get that woman character in. Completely understand it. Is she a badass? I, I like the character. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think that's the case at all. I think Black Widow is an, is an important enough character in the comics to where it... it it justifies putting her in the movie and her having her own movie. A little too late for her having I, her own movie. So here's the thing. So here's now this is where I get a problem with it. Okay. So she had her own movie. Okay. Fine. Didn't do so well in the box office, homie. And, that, and, it, it, and they put obviously, you know, she sued him because it went right to streaming instead of in the theaters. Mm -hmm. So because she lost money. Who's the main villain? Taskmaster. 
Right. With Deathlift. But... Exactly. It wasn't Taskmaster, actually, technically. But right? that's okay, though. No, it's not okay. Yes, it is. Taskmaster. Why is now explain to me why that's okay? Because now the point I'm trying to say is called the MCU. It's literally it becomes identity politics. It's really what it comes down to. It. Okay, I think uh, Disney slash Marvel has a narrative, and that's what they're pushing right now down people's throats. The with the LGBTQ two I can't even pronounce it. The gay community, okay, the trans community. I think that's really starting to get into it, which is fine. Okay, but to some fans out there, they don't respond well to that. Okay, a lot of people respond well to the source material. Okay, I'm a big source material guy. I'm all about stick with the comics. Now, we had a conversation where you and I almost rattled the room together, hollering so bad to each other when it came down to following source material. I'm with you. Back in the 1960s, it's a complete different era. Okay, a lot of racism going on. I definitely agree with that. However, you could still pull pieces of like 30 issues of the comics into a movie mm -hmm. okay and blur it up together to make a good story develop these characters and like a good cliffhanger for a sequel okay i'm all about that today. that's the way it should be i just it just comes down for me where i think kevin feige and marvel they just want to do what they want to do and the russo bros even came out and said they have no plan okay you think they do I don't think they do. I think they're really going to run the Marvel franchise into the ground with these movies that they're making or TV shows that they're making. I don't think it's going to resonate with people. And I do know that it really has gone woke, in my opinion. Okay, And it's going to get worse and worse and worse until we fight back and try to get our characters back. Now, last thing I'll say, and I'm going to give you the ring. So, these characters were made back in the 60s. Okay? All right? They have developed into iconic characters that people rest in. Posters, action figures, movies, cartoons, all the stuff that we, you and I grew up with, okay? Watching it on the big screen, which is something we all look forward to. It's, it's just a disappointment now. It was great in 2008 with Iron Man. I loved the uh, Thor movies. I actually liked all three of them. Ragnarok was good. Now the new one that's coming out, I think it's going to be sh so much crap. I mean, we talked about this as well. You know, with Jane Foster being the new Thor character, that's not going to sell too well, homie. I'm just being honest. I mean, you're really kicking Chris Hemsworth and the you know to the curb and trying to get Natalie Portman's character in there. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's going to sell well. Um, I don't think they're trying to. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Finish. Yeah, no, it's fine. There's, yeah, I, I, that's why I call it the MCU as a joke. It's just uh, it's it, it's a good, it's going in the direction of wokeism. It's not something that resonates with me very well. I feel like it's going to bite him in the ass. I really do. And because, and I'll be honest, I'll say on the record, I am a Spider Man, X Men, those are the characters who I follow. I don't really follow too much on anything else. So when we, when we talk about Spider Man, that I'll, I'll fight you all day long, homie. <laughs> but, uh, but no, please, I'd like to hear your opinion, right, but that's, so, that's how I feel. All right, so look, as far as source material goes, yeah. you, you can't argue that all the characters that they use are from comic books. And they're using them the same way they were in the comic books. So as far as source material goes, they're going into the source material and using it. The big problem I think you and a lot of people have is that they're using characters that you personally don't particularly connect to. And I understand that. There's a whole lot of characters out there I don't personally connect to. I didn't personally connect to Ironheart. I didn't think she was a bad character. I didn't think she was a good character. I just didn't particularly care. Now, I am looking forward to the series because I want to see what happens. I want to see how it connects to everything. I want to see how good it can be. That's why I don't mind the Disney Plus series. It's, it, to me, it's never a matter of, oh, oh, crap, they're using this character. They're using characters that aren't in, you know, that everybody's not this, you know, that everybody's not really into. It's like, well, you're going to use them anyway. Because here's the thing about comic books. All comic books cross over. All these characters have met each other. All these characters have touched each other, interacted with each other, went on adventures together, fought side by side, this, that, and the other. They've all been together. So you using one versus using the other one, it's not really that big a deal. Because like you said, if you're going to do a movie, you don't actually have to use one straight storyline. You just put a little bit from here, you can you can put a little bit from there, and you just make yeah, pull bits of pieces, pull pull bits of pieces and expand it, mm -hmm. which is exactly what they're doing. That's all they've ever done. Because, let's be for real, even as much as you like the Avengers, did the Avengers follow the exact storyline? No, no. No, because if they did, Ant-Man would have been in the first Avengers team, right? The, the name the Avengers came from, Wasp. She would have been in the first team. She probably wouldn't have been out there on the front lines fighting Loki, but she would have been side by side. 
I didn't care how they did it in the movie because it was like, okay, I understand what you're doing. You're building towards something else. You're using bits and pieces. You're using enough of where it began to build something. Just like you said, and I agree with that totally. Them using women, guess what? You're right. It is an absolute agenda. But guess what? Everybody has an agenda. That's not a Kevin Feige thing. That's not an MCU thing. That's not a Disney thing. Every single person that does business in, on this planet has an agenda. Because that's how you do business. You have an agenda because you're trying to get people to buy into what you're selling. Good. So we're, we're talking about that. No, no, no. Follow no, the no. money. You, no, follow the money. And that's the point. Follow the money. Because if, the, if that's the agenda, watch them lose money and, over the years, and then they're going to change their approach. And the exact same thing you're saying now about the MCU is exactly the same thing that they said when Andrew Garfield became Spider-Man instead of Toby Maguire. Everybody was so against it. Everybody hated that second movie. Then nobody liked that second Andrew, Andrew Garfield it was, movie. No, it, was, it was trash. I did. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great. It was trash. I thought it was okay. It was like, it is what it is. I didn't like the way they portrayed Electro. I did. I thought Jimmy Fox was a fantastic cast. I didn't like the. I hate his costume. And I, I didn't like his costume. It was trash. And it was like, okay, that's fine. I understand why they did the costume the way they did because. I, I don't know the 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 comic book thing with the lightning bolts just around the eyes of it. To me, it looks silly. It's old school. That's old school. Okay. Yeah, but see the open sea thing about it. But is, they did some good CGI like, in No Way Home where they did do that. I like. There we go. That no, was cool. Because see, here's the thing: they did good CGI in Green Lantern, and everybody still shit on them. Dude, that, that was, was bad. decent CGI. The problem with that the movie was, the was it was movie. bad. That no, was the worst. The CGI. We're not talking Ryan DC, Re- man. We can't I'm not talk just DC. saying. But right. you you brought up CGI. The CGI for Ryan Reynolds was fine. The CGI for everybody else was bad. Oh, is that? Oh, well, shit. That's why you brought Glee Lantern. You got the freaking ring on you. I, I wear it to work. You've seen me wear Gosh, this thing damn, to work. Dude, you, I'm a oh, Green Lantern sweat. Wow. Everybody knows that. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's besides the point. Um, All right, so you the like CGI the, for the so movie. So you like the movie? Okay. Um, no, I actually didn't like the movie at all. I didn't like, I didn't like that at all. Uh, I thought the villain was trash, and I thought the, the script itself was just. Oh, it was fucking terrible. It was fucking oh, terrible. Sorry. Uh, but, <laughs> freaking um, terrible. What was that? Oh, um, but everybody has an agenda. And having an agenda is fine because, like you said, follow the money. If people weren't, if they knew for a fact, hey, if we go in this direction, we're going to lose money. But if we go in this direction, we're going to gain money. Which direction do you think they're going to go? Because we're talking about Disney here. We're talking about Disney. We're not talking about Kevin Feige, one man army, holding on and to that, the MCU that's for the their worst life. part about it, man. That is, that, because that's the worst. I, people will still look, go see it. Every, that's what kills but it. see, that's the thing. They'll still go see it. And that's the thing. I don't. I can that. sit there and watch the movies and say I understand why they did this. So let me judge this movie standalone as itself, connected to the MCU as a thing, without having the comic books be, you know, be brought into my into my my brain as far as having the critique on it. Because I understand that they were never going to be like the comic books. They were never going to be like exactly like the comic books. The, the nostalgia I got from reading the comic books were never going to be translated into movies. It's an impossibility anyway. There's too many of them. It's, just, it's too many comic books, too many, many comic issues. There, there's I, just no way. I agree with that. And let's be for real, when that. comic book, when when comic, you, you alluded to it before, when comic books were at their height, they were never, they were never aimed at women, people of color, or anybody else outside of young white men. Because it was made in the 1960s. And, and, and I know that. And I'm, I'm not shitting on it. Because guess what? Even back then, when it wasn't named at me, I was still reading them. But that's the thing. But, th- but you were but, still reading them, Jaquan. So I'm all about that. So if there is a superhero. So if, you're, if you want to play your narrative, make a new character. Make and, a new character. But see, here's Don't the thing. ruin the characters that were made there. Iconic. But they really haven't changed any characters outside of the comic so books. They haven't. I'm talking. What I keep. I, did I ever say. I never said race swapping. I never said that. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about race swapping. I never said that. I understand gender swapping. But like, they for example, let's say Black gender... Panther. Someone play, if they put a white guy to play Black Panther, I would be freaking out. Dude, that would do. But see, but see, now you're peeling back. But see, now you're peeling back. But see, now you're peeling back layers of an argument that goes towards you thinking that it's woke when there is no comic. There is no comic book movie that's woke. None. People use that term way too much. I really. Hate you know, that there's term. a gay scene in Doctor Strange. right? I understand that. I don't mind it. But America Shop. I don't mind it. I don't mind that. But people are going to mind that. But that's America Shop is in the comic book is gay. I understand that. So let her character be gay in the movie. Okay. okay. And and I'm like, fine. I get it. People don't want to see it. It's a lot of stuff. I don't want to see. Sometimes I don't want to see grown folks kiss in a movie either. 
but that's a whole different thing. That's and, a whole you different know, you know, that's a different I, concept. But you know, I don't. It's a lot of stuff I don't want to see. But, but people use it. These are themes in movies, and it's fine because they're movies. They're meant to suspend. Um, you know, so you meant to suspend reality and throw yourself into that into that universe, right? But keep perfect example: throwing yourself into a universe. I am not the most easy person to frighten. Very little frightens me. Almost, actually, almost nothing. I think the only thing that actually scares me is is failing my wife and kids. That's probably the only thing that that's, that's actually truly scares. Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I remember Claire's Day. My father scaring the shit out of me because of the movie. Um, uh, because of the movie. Uh, uh what was it? Uh, shoot, Terminator. Scared the movie. Scared, scared the absolute bejesus out of me. That's a franchise that went down to the ground, too. Yeah, but see, the thing about it, it ran down to the ground because they didn't get with the times. No, they, that, just, didn't, what, they just didn't have James, James Cameron direct them all. That's probably the problem. And, and James Cameron ain't all that great of a director. Are Don't you kidding me? You? He, James, James Cameron is... Weird, weird now. We're talking about the MCU, mate. Now you're, now you're pissing me off. <laughs> tell, you what, go, tell you what, save that. We'll come back we'll and we'll talk about James Cameron Because but, I'll tell you, those Avatar movies that come out, one of them was coming out this December, that's going to kill it. Every single movie in the box office. Yeah, because people are stupid. He waited too long to do the movie. The first one wasn't even that good. People overplay that movie way too much. Yes, I'm crazy. But that ain't got nothing to do with my opinion on the movie. Fine. <laughs> you know, you like Morbius, so I really can't. We're, we're no, I, about... no, I just didn't think Morbius was horrible. Uh, I yeah. didn't say it Did was I tell you that? perfect. Did I freaking tell you that? I call, you know, I call so, here's the thing, guys. I will say I am the most passionate person when it comes to the Spider-Man franchise. Passion as hell. I, I I collected all their comics. I'm still working on a couple of issues that are like so expensive, that are like you know low graded. But still, these four thousand dollars for these comic books, man. But I'm, I'm I'll work on it. But the point is, I know we talked about the MCU, so I'm going to talk about Spider Man. Spider Man was obviously you know he's the most iconic character in the whole world. Everybody loves Spider Man. He's like the top three rated character that people love, and because you know he, he resonates. I wouldn't say anymore. And I would say yes because he, he's you know he's just a kid, nerdy kid. But he's also he has two identities, being a superhero that people can resonate with. Okay, so that's why Stan Lee created him because he was trying to find a character where people can resonate with, and that was Peter Parker. But we talked about now Morbius. I loved the character. Okay, I loved him in the comics. I liked how they kind of did this little anti-hero, give him his own little soul. It actually was pretty good. Jared Leto was a good cast for it. I mean, I thought he. I, we both agree. I thought he did a fantastic job. Okay, I thought he did a great job in the movie, but that movie was. Poorly directed. It was poorly written. It was jumping around like crazy. And then you look at the cameo appearance. If you got spoiler alert, I'm sure people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, don't. Um, Go see it. Don't listen. To it. Oh, it's terrible. So the cameo appearance makes no sense. He literally is driving. And then you got, and then you see Vulture, Michael Keaton's character, because he just got blipped into that universe. And you say, hey, we, I think we should team up against Spider Man. I'm intrigued. You have absolutely no direction way to even meet Spider-Man. Is there like a gap between the end of the movie and this cameo appearance where he did meet Spider-Man? It was piss poor the and way we, that was executed. And we agreed that that was completely ill-conceived and that Stupid. should have never been in the movie. That ruined the movie. But honestly, and you shouldn't have, but see, that's not that's not the fault of the movie. That's not the fault of Jared Leto. That's I not, never said it was. It was that, I, no, no, no. Directed, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it for now. If that movie came out before No Way Home, which it was supposed to, they would have kept all those scenes to connect to the Spider-Man franchise. It probably would have made more sense. But since No Way Home came out before it, they're like, oh, crap. we got to cut this scene, cut this scene, cut this scene. And it was a garbage movie. You should just cut the whole movie. Granted, see, they spent $75 million already to make it, but now see, look, I don't, it's terrible. I don't, see, I don't think, but see, and you can start over and do another movie because that's what they did with Ant-Man in the MCU. But that's, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, my problem with Mobius was the end scene. Morbius. Uh, Morbius, I'm sorry. Uh, was the end was the end, end credit scene. I thought that was completely unnecessary and completely over Trash. bad. Trash, dude. Bad. Um, to me, honestly, if you're going to do Sinister Six, which is what they're trying to build, you know that just like Sony's been doing that since the Andrew Garfield movies. And I'll tell you right, go ahead. No, they were trying to do that. They were trying to build toward the Sinister Six in the third Tobey Maguire movie. That was the whole point of having Sandman and uh, Venom and Venom wasn't in the Sinister Six, I, but that's the point. But that was what they were trying to do, which is exactly what they're trying to do now. They're trying to throw Venom into the Sinister Six. Dude, Sony sucks. I'll tell you what, man. It, I don't think Sony sucks. What I think oh, they make so many poor executive decisions. I literally called Sony Entertainment as just being a fan. I knew I wasn't getting anywhere with it. I literally called the call off or a call center. They transferred me over to the executive department. Had to leave a voicemail. My voicemail wasn't friendly, man. I mean, I literally roasted these people. I'm like, it is not that hard to make a Spider Man movie. It really isn't. I mean, you have the best, one of the best characters in the world. All you got to do is follow bits of the source material. Now, I made a comment to you about this, and you and I agreed to it. Okay? I think Tom Holland is solid. 
I mean, he, the kid looks like he's 16. When he's probably 30, he'll look like he's 20. He's got the young look. He can probably play that character if he wants to for a long time. And he'd be stupid if he didn't because he's making tons of money. How much money he's making on the next three movies? Mm -hmm. Insane. Insane. And you know how much he was making before the first three? Not as much as you think. Yeah. So he's going to be making some serious dough. I mean, mean, him looking so young is probably why I didn't like Uncharted so much. I think if him and Mark Wahlberg swapped characters, I think I probably would have liked it a little bit more. But I didn't like Uncharted at all. You know, I'm was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, and I was I was looking forward to it because it was like, oh god, Tom I, I, I did a good job. I love the game franchise. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is gonna be great. Tom I, movie, did good. I was like, this is horrible. Yeah. I was like, what is this? Tom Holland did good. I'm not taking I think he did a good job of support. He did the best he could for what he had. I mean, he yeah. t- studied the character, he played the video games to kind of get an idea. You know, I did okay. You know, it's just but they literally crammed like literally all four games into that movie. Yeah. You didn't do that. You didn't need to do that. I mean, it's, it's just... It, you even have Elena in the movie. I was surprised Elena wasn't even in portraying that movie. She's a huge character. Especially the, the fact series. that they tried to squeeze so many of, of so much of the gaming franchise into one movie. Yeah, and then you had Neil Druckmann, you know, producing in the movie, or at least involved in it. I'm like, oh, God, we know Neil Druckmann. That's another story. Yeah. Now, um, let, me, let me say one thing real quick. Yeah, go ahead. As far as the word woke, I don't think any, any comic book movie is woke. And I'll tell you why. Oh, okay. No, the word woke... It's thrown out a lot. It's thrown out a lot. Yeah. And I think maybe 2% of the population that's using it is actually using it correctly. Honestly. That is the honest to God truth. When somebody says woke, what I hear is, I understand that even though nobody's talking about it or, or if somebody's trying to cover it up, that this is a problem. And not only is this a problem, but it affects this, this segment of people. Or hell, it may even affect pretty much everybody. Right? <clears throat> and then the whole point of saying it out loud is that, okay, well, now I have a solution to the problem. And this is what I believe the solution should be. Because what you're trying to do by being woke is to generate a conversation toward a solution, right? Calling a comic book movie woke generates no conversation toward any solution because the solution is when they make the movie is to make money. So there's nothing woke about it because they're making money. Every single movie is making money. All of them are big. Even the terrible ones are making money. They're making money because of these characters, because they, the, the, the passion that you have explaining right now about with this topic. Yeah. It, same thing is why people want to see these movies, because they love the character. They want to see the movie succeed because they love the character so much. And this goes Just to- like I want Spider-Man to succeed. Now, here's the thing. I told you, you mentioned both. Okay. Let's look at this. You and I debated about this. Zendaya. Okay. Okay. I hate it. Way they put Mary Jane. In. I hate it. Okay, and I'll tell you why. And then I'll get I'll get to Ned in a minute. So Mary Jane, Kristen Dunst, she was okay. All right, not, not great. Gwen Stacy, Emma Stone, I thought she did well. Yeah. Okay, then you got Tom Holland. So now they're doing this all over again in this universe. Okay, we'll see where we're going with it. I see Zendaya is casted as MJ. Okay, so I'm like. Why? Okay. Mary Jane is, we talked about, she is a redhead and she's white. Okay. So, but now we talked about in this, you know, with race. Okay. So I get what they're going with it. Okay. I see what John Watts is trying to do. He's trying to make Spider Man more into like today's environment, like today's society. Okay. I, Mary Jane Watson is an actress. Okay. And she's not that bright. Okay. She's not a science whiz. She's not MIT whiz. Okay, hated that part. But okay, here's the thing: you said it. Putting Tom Holland into the Spider-Man suit was what? Another universe. It's another universe. I get it. You have... e- they even marched you right into it with Spider-Man: No Way Home. That was the point. I, I don't like it though, homie. But and, and I understand. I that, don't but, like it. But see, here's here's the thing: because, because people don't understand. Now, here's the thing: no one knew that they were going to tie Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield in the third movie. No. It's, no one. Now, when you watched uh, Far From Home, you didn't know that was happening. Okay, after Far From Home, you didn't know they were gonna actually blink both Spider Mans and that. So now, yeah, you got that third universe, and then you got a different Mary Jane, and then you got Andrew Garfield, which I think he's gonna get a solo movie again, homie. I really believe. It. I don't think so. I believe it, man, because they really. I poked, don't think so. I, Sony poked some fingers. Like when he, remember when he was sitting on the on that uh, railing? So he's like, man, I want to fight an alien. Yeah. Yeah, you got Eddie Brock's character. Okay, that they put that Eddie Brock's character might be in Andrew Garfield's universe. I feel like Andrew Garfield might get a solo movie. I really do. I think as far as the Zendaya thing is, you, you said it yourself. 
this is a whole new universe. And the thing about it is, is you and me didn't know it. The fans didn't know it, that they were going into a whole nother universe bending thing. But how do we know that they didn't have this planned out long before we ever saw Zendaya as Mary Jane? You don't, we don't know that. It's a different universe, but it was never in the comics. That's the point I'm trying to say. That was never in the comics. If you want to make universes, fine. Follow the damn source material. You don't have, make, another, you don't have make, another universe. Don't make, make your own source material with you, MJ being an MIT. But you student. just had, you this literally you literally just had no, another movie no. of Spider Man, of Spider Man in a, with different with universe bending. That, but that's the point I'm trying to say, Jaquan. They're making movies. They have no plan. They're just saying, all right, let's just do this because you know what? Let's just try it this way. You really think? I don't how, like you really think Hollywood executives are sitting there with no plan making movies? Come on, don't 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 do that to yourself. Hollywood executives? Yes, you really think they're You're just? You're really gonna say the Hollywood? Okay, these Hollywood. I don't. I'm not saying that they're the brightest brightest pack of cats on, on the stupid. planet. They're stupid. I understand they that. They make poor decisions. But don't think for one second that they don't have a plan. That they don't like. Okay, well we can go in this direction with this. They don't don't have people. The execs themselves may not be the dudes coming up with the ideas, which more than likely they ain't. But let's be for real. They're paying people to sit there and just think of shit all day. That's what they do. There are people that that's all they do. Sit there and think of things all day. Yeah, they, yeah who they hire, you know what they should hire is people that actually have two cents and know these characters and know what the hell they're doing. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. People would, who actually read the comics and I actually understand change. the character, not this freaking, I would let's just keep that. with the society with how we can relate no. to this world. No, don't do no. that. No. This is supposed I'll to be entertaining. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you exactly why, 100% why we should not have fans talking about, oh, well, I, this is how you should do the movie. And asking fans how they no, do the movie. No, I, I see yes. the creators. The I creator. Mean, well, most of them are dead by now, but that's the, number one. That's part of the point. <laughs> most of them are gone. God, that was, dead I was, gone. Stan Lee was still alive, man. I'm like, man, what the hell are you doing? To my most characters? of them are dead and gone. That's number one. But let's be for real. If you got those creators, you would never see Miles Morales. And tell me, you don't want to see Miles Morales in the movie? I think it'd be awesome. But you would never see Miles Morales in the movie if you got them to do it. Because they aren't going to put a black kid in the superhero role. That's, no, that's not true. They, they wouldn't. Those, black those, Panther. Those do. You got that now. After how, how, after how long? How long did it take for you to get Black Panther between Blade, which saved comic books? Blade was good. But nobody Blade knew it was, was a comic book character. How many people actually knew it was a comic book character? Hey, I, Just hey, percentage. Hey, Miles Morales should have came out way sooner. I, 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 because Miles Morales is a great character. I understand that. But do you know? But do you understand between Blade and Black Panther and you can, you can throw um, into the Spider-Verse? Because... They are right next to each other, but they're close enough to each other where you can say these two and Blade. How long did it go from Blade to that? How long did it take to get up to Blade? I agree with you. That way too damn long. They were never going to throw. Even after Blade did the movie, it did the money it did. Brought in fans who did not know Blade was a Blade was a comic book character. Yeah, that baffles me. How do people not know that? Because Blade was a minor character as far as comic book readers go. <sighs> I don't know, man. Even among comic book readers, Blade was not that popular. That surprises me. You know, I don't fight and fall. Think about it. Ghost Rider thought... was not really super popular. I'm not going to say it wasn't popular with a lot of people. It was. But overall, in comic books, it wasn't. pretty much most, wasn't. most of the it Midnight wasn't. Suns weren't yeah, it popular. It wasn't. You're right. I, we're agreeing on this, homie. So and, whole... and, but that's what I'm saying. These pe the, You keep talking about the creators. They aren't thinking about black superheroes. They aren't thinking about female superheroes. You didn't start getting this push for black heroes and female superheroes. Until the late, until the mid to late nineties. Don't forget about Cloak and Dagger. I understand that, but let's be for real. Cloak and Dagger is still a, a minor character. It's still minor characters in comic books. But they can make a really good movie out of Cloak. They and Dagger. can. The TV show was pretty good. They can yeah. make a good movie out of it. Yeah. But they were still minor characters that nobody really wanted to see. Them. That's the point. If we're talking about movies, you can't go with creators. You can't go with fans because the fans are always going to stay homogenous, and the world isn't homogenous. It is more people out here reading comic books than ever before. Ever before. Because all they're doing is making superheroes now. Yeah, but the thing about it is, is guess what? That's how mo movies go in cycles like that. Movies go in cycles like that. When's the last time you saw a good Western? Right? The last good Western I personally saw was 310 to Yuma. That was my last. I was like, that was a good Western. That was a good Western. Tombstone. Now, how long ago before that was 310 to Yuma? 310 to Yuma was, what, a two, a early 2010s. It was something like that. It's like 2010, somewhere between 10 and 15. Mm. Tombstone was what? 90s? 90, 01, 02, something like that. That was good. Yeah, but the point is, is that's a big gap between two good movies. But then you go back further, every movie was damn near, damn near Western. And you had a ton of Westerns coming out left and right because that's what people wanted to see. That was what was generating money. 
And that's all Hollywood is worried about. They're not worried about comic book readers. They don't give a shit. They just want to make money. But the, mo- the movies were never going to be for you. They were never going to be for me. They were never going to be for the us sweaty nerds. They were never, no comic book movie ever made was ever going to be for the people that read comic books. I told you this before. They were never about us. It was never about that. It was about how much can we make some money off of this? Yeah, how much money can we make? All right, let's get a group together and see what we can come up with as far as a script. And then let's talk about it and see how, actually how much money we can make if we actually do go through with this. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't think for one second that these dudes is just throwing stuff against the wall. They stick. All right, cool. They ain't doing that. They're not. They're sitting there months and years on end trying to figure out if the movie will make money or not. Okay. I'm and then, trying, if they I'm, if they get hey. if they can literally get right up to two days before get two days before the, the shooting starting it's like eh, they ain't gonna make no money. Pull the plug. Thank <laughs> you.